Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for November 21, and there sure is a lot going on in the news. For example, we've been reporting for some time that car sales are slowing down in China. They're still up 6% this year, which most countries would love to see, but that's down considerably from China's formerly torrid pace. Next year, analysts and executives say sales will slow down more due to the end of some incentives and tighter credit control. But you know, here's where the real news is. The drop in sales is even hitting the luxury segment. Gasco reports that luxury sales have been slowing since September. In Shanghai, which is a bellwether for the rest of the country, registrations were down over 40% in October compared to September. Beijing also saw a similar decrease. The drop in luxury sales is attributed to small private businesses falling on harder times. But even if it's slowing down, China is still the biggest market in the world, and that's a key reason why Ford just announced plans to introduce 20 new engines and transmissions in China by 2015. The technology, which includes EcoBoost, will end up in 15 new vehicles. Direct injection, twin independent variable camshaft timing, and dual clutch transmissions are all part of the menu. Add it all up and these advancements should deliver around a 20% improvement in fuel efficiency. And yet, while Ford is giving up on selling its Ranger midsize pickup in the American market, GM believes it can make a business case for that segment. Wards reports that GM sees a need for a simple midsize pickup that offers the best 10-year cost of ownership in the segment. It quotes Mark Royce as saying, GM would offer a truck with a smaller engine, perhaps with e-assist and maybe one that could run on alternate fuels. The idea is to come out with a work truck, and that's why Roy says they would not go after the Toyota Tacoma, which offers a lot of accessories and is more of a lifestyle-oriented truck. While sales are slowing down in China, they sure are gaining momentum in the U.S. Last week, we reported that GM sales chief in the U.S. expects this month's selling rate to come in around 14 million units, but that includes medium and heavy-duty trucks. Now, Ward says November sales rate for light passenger vehicles could hit a 13.7 million SAR, and obviously that does not include the heavies. Automakers in the U.S. are expected to sell 1 million vehicles this month, which is a 10% increase, in fact, more than a 10% increase compared to last year. More inventory, more fleet sales, and year-end incentives should help the SAR reach its highest total since cash for clunkers. Former General Motors Chairman John Smale passed away at the age of 84. He was also the former chairman of Procter & Gamble and was the one who pushed GM to adopt brand marketing to sell its cars much like P&G sells consumer products. Under this strategy, GM unleashed a myriad of models aiming for every conceivable consumer segment. But it turned out not even General Motors could afford to tool up and properly advertise so many models from so many brands, and it was one of the many strategies that ultimately forced General Motors into bankruptcy. Man, that spat between Volkswagen and Suzuki is only getting worse. Some reports say that Suzuki has terminated its two-year relationship with VW, but VW is having none of it. According to Bloomberg, Volkswagen will not sell its shares in Suzuki. It owns about 20% of the company. Martin Winterkorn, VW's CEO, is quoted as saying, they're in it for the long haul and will merely wait until a new generation of Suzuki management takes the reins because maybe they will want to cooperate. (laughs) German stubbornness at its best. Coming up next, we'll take a look at how Chevy makes the ZL1 Camaro slice through the wind. 
if we always settled for the first thing that came along? Then we'd never have gotten here. Introducing the Sonata Hybrid from Hyundai. Horsepower is one way to get a car to go faster, but if you can make a car more aerodynamic, you can do the same thing. But the trick is to make it do that and stick to the road. Here's what GM did with the aerodynamics of the Camaro ZL1. This car is the first performance car that General Motors has done that's gonna have either zero neutral lift or negative lift. And the objective for the ZL1 in terms of aerodynamics was to improve the lift performance, was to try to get it as neutral as possible and possibly generate downforce. An aero is tied obviously into the chassis dynamics of the vehicle. So anytime you're improving the lift or reducing the lift, your cornering capability, your braking capability, all gets enhanced. And that we know through simulation, there's a direct correlation with the amount of lift improvement you get and the lap times you get out here at MRC or other racetracks. I am Tom Froling, lead development engineer, aerodynamics for General Motors. But also, I'm a retired F-16 pilot. We use two different wind tunnels and computational fluid dynamics, or CFD. So we can do real in-depth studies of the air particles as they flow around and through the brake ducts. We've been in G-Mall, which is the GM Aero Lab wind tunnel, for about 100 hours of wind tunnel development. A lot of times when regular engineers are sleeping, we're in the wind tunnel developing a lot of the features you see on this car. We typically do our development at 110 kph, or roughly 66 miles per hour. The vehicle sits on this full-scale balance here, and we measure all the aero coefficients. We decided to develop a splitter, and what that is doing is reducing the lift on the car. Extractor provides a cooling flow improvement and a front lift improvement. Front wheel extension that helps with lift and helps also with our brake cooling. Providing more cooling flow because of the increased horsepower. We have a unique rocker for the ZL1 that can offer a drag reduction and also a lift enhancement. The rear spoiler is unique to the ZL1. The splitter, the tire dams, the belly pan system, the brake ducts, lap times at like MRC and Nurburgring. You can see how all these modifications translate into a hard lap time and you can quantify and say, you know, we made the car go faster. I think aerodynamics will become even more important later this decade as automakers struggle to meet fuel economy standards. And I think there's a lot more that can be achieved with active aero, where parts of the body adapt to the aerodynamic load. Hey, if you like AutoLine Daily, don't forget that you can sign up on our subscription list so that you get all of our updates delivered right to your email box. Just look at our website on autoline.tv for the box that shows you how you can sign up for free. And that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.